G'day friends, it's Andrew here from Nature's Image Photography and I am about as excited as I've ever been to put out a new video on YouTube and it's entirely fitting that I'm shooting this one on my old Panasonic Lumix G9 because I'm here to announce the arrival of the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. Now, this has been a long time coming. Uh, Lumix owners have been uh, wondering whether there would be a successor to the G9 and when it might come. Uh, there's been rumours, but uh, no one really knew for sure. I knew nothing until about a month ago when Panasonic Australia contacted me, asking me if I'd be interested in making some review, preview videos um, about the, the new camera. Uh, so now I have it in my hot little hand, and I'm going to take you through some of the features of the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. So in this video I want to introduce the new camera and run through a list of what I think are some of the standout features. Uh, as time goes by down the track I intend to produce a few individual videos looking in more detail at some of those particular features. So if you're new to my channel be sure to subscribe because there'll be more content coming on the, uh, the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. Um, and if you really learn something of value from the videos I'm putting out you can always thank me with a coffee and I'll put a link to that in the information below. Now when it comes to reviews, I think that the people who follow my channel know I'm not a particularly technical reviewer. Uh, there are other people out there who are far more qualified than me to, to talk about the science and the, the technicalities uh, behind a new release like this. Um, and Panasonic will have on board some videographers who will uh, look at some more of the video functions of the camera. I'm very much a stills photographer. I mostly do landscapes, wildlife, and a, a little bit of portrait photography. So I'll be uh, bringing that point of view to, to my reviews of the camera. Uh, and what I want to do now is go through some of the, uh, the really exciting features that I think are going to make this one of the best, uh, probably the best, micro four thirds camera the world's ever seen. Let's look at the body design of the, the Lumix G9 Mark II, and G9 users are going to find it a little different. This camera is very much in keeping with the current lineup of uh, Lumix cameras, and in fact it's virtually identical to the, um, the S5 Mark II, the full frame, frame camera that I got earlier this year. Uh, so it really uh, fits what Panasonic's been doing with their, their most recent lineup of cameras. So for G9 users it's a little bit different, but I think I'm confident in saying that almost every change uh, that's been made to the camera is an improvement. So I think you're going to like it. Um, I'm going to go through some of the features. Let's actually look through the camera and I'll bring some pictures up on the screen so that you can see what I'm talking about in more detail. But um, on the front of the camera we've got a lovely hand grip. Um, I think it better than the grip on the G9 and the G9 was always a nice easy one to hold but this one seems to just fit my hand a little bit better. Apart from that on the front it's a very neat little camera. There's very little um, uh, to be looked at there. We've got the, um, the lens release button and then on the other side of the lens we've got two customizable function buttons which are easy to get to uh, but just deep enough into the camera that you're not likely to bump them by accident. Um, so very little uh, space being taken up on the front, it's a nice simple design. Uh, when we get to the top of the camera one of the big uh, differences you're going to notice is you no longer have the little information screen there. Uh, some people might miss that, I don't really, um, I probably hardly ever used it to be honest. Um, but uh, what that's done is freed up a little bit of space so they can spread things out a little bit. Uh, on the G9 you had the, the mode dial and the uh, release mode dial both sort of sandwiched together on the same um, point here. Uh, but now you've got your release mode dial on the left and you've got your, your uh, exposure mode dial on the right uh, and that just makes things a little bit easier to access and um, uh, I think it's a, it's a neater design. Your on off buttons in a different spot, um, your uh, front control wheel is on top at the front instead of just at the front here. You've got the back control wheel in pretty much the same place. Uh, your uh, white balance, ISO and exposure compensation buttons are exactly where they were before and the ISO button still has two little knobs on it uh, which makes it easy to find with your finger so it's easy to, to make adjustments to the ISO while looking through the viewfinder. Uh, and then you've got your, your red video button and it's sort of neatly spaced between all the others so you're not likely to bump it by accident. Uh, there are some cameras where you go to take a photograph and you actually accidentally start shooting video by mistake. That's not going to happen with this camera because they've separated the, the photo and the video button nicely. Uh, so it's, it's a nice easy design and easy to navigate. Turn the camera around and you'll be happy to know that we still have that lovely articulated screen that we had before. Uh, that we had before. Um, 
it's so handy and if you haven't uh, had a fully articulated screen you've got no idea how useful they can be. This screen's higher resolution than what we had on the G9 which will mean uh, you'll get better previews and reviews of your photographs uh, for framing up and for reviewing pictures. So you've got a higher resolution screen but apart from that uh, it's just as um, handy and functional as it was before. Now for the rest of what's on the back I'm going to put a picture up here because I can't do this and talk to you at the same time. Um, so uh, it's, not, it's a nice easy layout on the left, I'll just go from left to right. You've got your review button, your LVF which is about switching the, uh, the view from the, the viewfinder to the rear screen. Um, then to the right of the viewfinder you've got the autofocus uh, control and you've got two in one here. You've got a little uh, lever that turns a wheel to choose between uh, single photos, uh, single autofocus, continuous autofocus and manual focus and then inside that wheel there's a little button that you use to choose your autofocus area mode. It's a nice neat simple design and again it's very easy to find without even taking your eye away from the viewfinder. To the left of that we've got the um, uh, little joystick uh, similar to the one we had on the G9 except the G9 only moved four ways, it moved up, down, left and right. Uh, this one has an eight-way um, joystick, which means when you're moving your autofocus uh, point around, instead of having to go up and across, you can move it diagonally. So you've got left, right, up, down, and you've also got uh, the diagonal. So a little bit more functionality added to the joystick. Uh, it's just a nice extra touch. The AF on button, uh, if you're going to do back button focus, um, that's uh, easy to find. Uh, but it's also a customizable button, so if you don't want to use that for focus, you can apply other functions to that button. Uh, the Q menu, uh, quick menu, uh, it's a good design, the quick menu on this camera. Uh, it's similar again to what I've had on my last couple of cameras. And um, uh, that's uh, a, a button that stands out on its own, very easy to get to. Then you've got your third um, control wheel on the back, and inside you've got the, the menu uh, button. Uh, and then you've got the uh, display and the delete buttons. It's all very neatly laid out. Um, the, they seem to have put a bit of thought into how they use the real estate on the back of the camera because nothing's too close together and when you hold the camera in your hand nothing is positioned in a place where you're really likely to bump it by accident. So um, look if you if you like the, desi the design of the G9 I think you're going to like the design of this one even better. Um, as I said it's in keeping with the design of all the current models that I've got it on the S5 Mark II and it's very similar to my G8 VI II um, and I think if you thought the G9 was great I think you're going to find the G9 II is even better. Just a few final details on the body and we have a dual card slot just like we did on the G9 and it takes two um, SD cards. Uh, it doesn't take a CF Express card like the GH6, it's got two slots for, for SD cards and you can assign uh, how you use those, how you, um, what you choose to, sh to save on each card. Uh, the battery is uh, the same battery that's on the, uh, the recent cameras I bought, the S5 II and the GH6. It's different to the one in the G9, uh, it's the BLK22. Um, now I, I guess it's a shame that it's not the same battery that's on the G9, you'll have to look at new batteries if you want to get a few spares. But if you end up getting a, a bit of a collection of cameras, the way I seem to be doing these days, uh, it is nice that uh, all the recent lineup of cameras all, all share the same battery. And finally, uh, weather sealing. Uh, just like the G9, this camera, the G9 Mark II, is, uh, has got the same level of weather sealing. Um, so you're quite confident taking it out in a shower of rain. Uh, it can take a bit of a knock, it's a fairly robust camera. Um, and uh, it's rated to shoot in uh, hot temperatures up to 40 degrees and um, to, down to minus 10 degrees below zero. So uh, it's a camera that's uh, very well weatherproofed, um, sort of in, um, in keeping with some of the best on the market. Okay, I'm just going to slip this random little clip in here. Uh, I know it's a different uh, day and a different place and a different shirt, uh, but there's one thing I forgot to mention in my original recording uh, and uh, I didn't want to leave it out. So uh, I'm uh, going to add this in here while we're still talking about the camera body. I want to talk about the shutter button. Uh, anyone who's owned the original G9 will recall what a light touch that shutter button was. Between focusing and shooting, it was such a tiny difference in pressure that uh, quite often we'd go to focus and we'd accidentally fire off a shot. 
Uh, if you're in burst mode, you might fire off three or four shots without meaning to, because that button was such a light touch. Um, but now they've got the balance right. Uh, it takes uh, uh, the proper amount of pressure to focus and just that little bit of e extra push to, to shoot. Uh, you're not going to have that same mistake rate because they've got the balance right. The button is better. I can't really put it much better than that. Uh, on the, if you had any trouble with the, uh, the button on the Lumix G9, uh, on the Lumix G9 Mark II, the button is a lot better. Now let's look at one of the big headline upgrades uh, to the G9 Mark II and that's the sensor. This is one that a lot of people are going to want to know about. Uh, so the Lumix G9 Mark II has a 25 megapixel dual gain sensor. Uh, that means um, greater resolution than what we had before uh, and also better dynamic range. 25 megapixels is a 25% increase on what we had on the G9 which was 20 uh, and that spells um, greater detail. Now I've got 25 megapixels on my GH6 and the way I describe it to people is that if the G9 was fantastic at capturing detail, the GH6 is really good at picking up those very fine details inside the details. It's that extra level of, of detail that uh, I think you're going to notice. Um, and the dual gain sensor uh, increases the dynamic range. You get a dynamic range boost. Um, and this is, um, let's say it's the, the latest evolution in Panasonic Lumix sensor technology because the um, uh, the, S, uh, the, sorry, the GH6 uh, has a dynamic range boost but it only kicks in uh, at 800 ISO and above, so only in the higher ISO ranges. Uh, but with the G9 Mark II it's right throughout the ISO range. So with this new sensor you're getting uh, more detail and more dynamic range um, for pretty much every photograph you shoot. Let's move on to another big ticket item and that's autofocus. Uh, and uh, you're going to be happy to know that the uh, phase detect hybrid autofocus system that debuted in the S5 Mark II earlier this year is now available on the G9 Mark II as well. Uh, now if you follow the reviews for the S5 Mark II uh, you'll know it was incredibly well received around the world uh, and Panasonic went from being considered by some to have a uh, a pretty uh, poor autofocus system, especially for continuous video autofocus, uh, was catapulted to, uh, to one of the leaders in its class, uh, compared very favourably to some of the most popular cameras on the market. Now we have that same autofocus system in the G9 Mark II. Uh, but uh, this is the latest evolution in that system because uh, we have a couple of features on this camera that aren't even available on the full frame S5 Mark II. In particular, we have uh, vehicle detection, uh, which means uh, for motorsports enthusiasts that's going to be handy and you can select uh, car and also motorbike detection uh, so that's a, a selectable function now in the autofocus system uh, and we also have of course uh, face eye and body detect for humans uh, but now added to the animal autofocus uh, we have animal detection we have animal eye detection as well uh, so now you can specifically detect, uh, uh, select to choose uh, focusing on the animal's eye, uh, which takes the autofocus system, uh, even for wildlife photography, a step above what we had before. Uh, so we now have one of the best autofocus systems in the world, and it's available in the Micro Four Thirds Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at uh, image stabilisation and once again the G9 offers the dual, st dual stabilisation where a stabilised lens and body work together with compatible lenses uh, and on the G9 that gave us up to six and a half stops of stabilisation. On the G9 Mark II they pushed that even further to eight stops uh, which means that the, the Lumix series continues to, to be a bit of a world leader in uh, stabilisation. Now, to be more specific, uh, I'm told by Panasonic that up to about 60 millimeters, uh, so on my Panasonic Leica 12 to 60 millimeter lens, up to 60 millimeters, I can expect about eight stops of image stabilization. Uh, if I go to 140 millimeters, which is uh, 280 millimeters in full frame terms, 
um, then it can drop back to about seven and a half stops. Still extremely healthy. Seven and a half stops is brilliant. So uh, I have shot a bit of video already where I've turned the stabiliser on and off and you can see a massive difference. Uh, it, it means I believe that Lumix continues to lead the world in terms of image stabilisation, giving you really steady shots for, for video and for stills. Now along with that great image stabilisation uh, comes another feature which is uh, I think pretty exciting for landscape photographers in particular uh, and that's a handheld high resolution mode. Now high resolution has been around for a while, the G9 has it, um, and it, you press the button once the camera takes eight photos uh, and it merges them into one very high resolution file. Um, now on the G9 that produced an 80 megapixel file and you had to use a tripod to do it. Uh, on the G9 Mark II, it produces a 100 megapixel file, which is massive, um, and uh, that means you can produce uh, very, very large prints if, if printing is your thing. Uh, but even if it, you don't produce the larger photos, it, it increases the level of detail and sharpness in a photograph, it increases your dynamic range, so overall image quality and sharpness and detail are improved. Uh, and on the G9 Mark II, you can do it handheld. Uh, thanks to that very, very powerful image stabiliser. Uh, and to me that's a bit of a game changer because if you're like me, quite often you, you get out of the car without your tripod because you don't think you're going to use it and then a big moment comes along, you want the high resolution mode and on the G9 you couldn't do it without the tripod. Now you can do it handheld uh, and I think that's a fantastic feature and it's going to be very much appreciated by landscape photographers, um, architecture photographers, people like that. Um, really, really large, high quality files and you can save them as RAW or JPEG. Now here's a feature that's not just an upgrade on the G9, it's a, it's a feature the G9 didn't have at all, and that's Live View Composite. Uh, this is a feature that has been available on some Panasonic cameras, but sadly not on the G9. With Live View Composite, uh, you originally set your aperture and shutter speed to expose correctly for the scene, and you take your first shot. When you press again, uh, the camera keeps on shooting the same scene over and over again um, and you see the image on, on live on screen and the camera only adds something to the image when something changes. So for example, if you're doing a storm, uh, you'd see the same image over and over again but when a bolt of lightning hits, then that bolt of lightning will be added into the image. If you've got three bolts of lightning, you'd see three bolts of lightning appear on the image and it all builds on your screen in real time so you can see what you're getting as you shoot and when you're happy that you've got the shot uh, you want, you press stop. Uh, it's fantastic for things like fireworks and if you, if you like that effect of uh, car tail light trails running through a street, that sort of thing. Um, unlike doing just a long exposure photograph where you can risk overexposing the image before you get the effect you want, uh, with Live View Composite uh, you see the image building live on screen, you expose correctly for the scene you want to shoot uh, and you press stop when you're satisfied with what you've got. Um, it's a really good little feature and I'm looking forward to uh, getting some more experience with it. Uh, I hope to show you some samples uh, by the time I finish making this video. Now here's one for the action photographers, if you do a lot of sports or wildlife uh, action photography. Um, let's look at the burst rates. The G9 Mark II uh, can shoot at up to 14 frames per second uh, using the mechanical shutter. Uh, that's with autofocus uh, single. If you go to autofocus continuous, that'll drop back to about 10 frames per second. When you go to electronic shutter, uh, you can shoot up to 75 frames a second, which is massive. Um, and when you go to autofocus continuous, that'll drop back to about 60 frames a second. Uh, now 60 frames a second is more than healthy, and it's a big improvement on the G9, which had a pretty fast frame rate uh, in electronic shutter uh, when you used AFS. But if you used autofocus continuous, it dropped back to 20 frames a second. Uh, so now we've got uh, autofocus continuous shooting up to 60 frames a second uh, using the, the Lumix G9 Mark II. Just like the original uh, G9, the G9 Mark II, in addition to having a super high speed rate, uh, also has a super high speed pre-burst option. Uh, now this is a function where when you half press to uh, focus, uh, the camera starts taking photos right away. Uh, and it keeps on taking photos until you fully press. And when you do fully press, it saves everything you shoot plus a certain amount of shots from before you press the button. So even when you miss the moment, chances are the camera's going to capture it. 
Now the G9 had a pre-burst of only 0.4 of a second, uh, so almost half a second. If you missed the moment when a bird took off from the branches of a tree, uh, if your reflexes were a bit off, uh, then the chances are the camera would capture it because it was shooting photos from 0.4 of a second from before you pressed the button. On the G9 Mark II, we take that a step further. Not only do we have faster frame rates, but the, the pre-burst offers you three options now. You can have half a second, a second, or a second and a half. Um, so even if you thoroughly miss the moment, if you're using the pre-burst, uh, the camera's almost certain to capture it. So it's going to be a really good benefit for, for people who do lots of uh, split-second stuff, like uh, trying to shoot the, um, the moment the starter pistol goes off at the start of a 100 metre race, that kind of thing. Uh, so a half a second, a second, and a second and a half of pre-burst combined with a super high speed rate, and you're going to struggle to miss a moment. So that takes us through some of the real headline features of the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. Uh, I do just want to say a couple of words about the user friendliness of the camera for people who are really used to the G9 and, and are worried they might have trouble adjusting to the G9 Mark II. Uh, first of all, the menu is a little different, uh, but it's better. Uh, it's the menu they've been using in all their more recent release cameras and it's very familiar to what you've had before, it's just a little better organised. Uh, it, it divides things up into sort of chapters and sub-chapters and it's, it's well organised and easier to navigate than what we had before. So it's not exactly what you've seen before but it's very similar and in fact I think it's quite a lot better. Um, and finally uh, I want to talk about customization. Uh, the G9 was one of the most customizable uh, cameras on the market and the G9 Mark II continues in that tradition. Um, honestly, you can put almost anything you want almost anywhere you want it. Uh, for example, um, when I shoot in manual mode, I like to have my shutter speed at the back and the aperture, sorry, my shutter speed at the front and my aperture at the back. Um, but by default, the camera comes the other way around. So you normally have the aperture at the front and the shutter speed at the back. You can just reverse that. Uh, you've got two customizable buttons at the front here. That there are dozens of features you can put, you can add to those um, two buttons, so you can uh, make them do whatever you want them to do. Uh, you can change the quick menu around to, to suit the way you want it. In short, you can make this camera work exactly to suit your needs. Um, so like the G9, with the G9 Mark II, they have continued in the tradition of producing one of the most uh, customizable and most user-friendly cameras on the market. Okay, I think that's about it for my initial look at the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. Um, I really want to thank Panasonic Australia for giving me the, the opportunity to, uh, to get my hands on this before release. Uh, and for the people who've been holding on to their G9s for years waiting for a successor, I hope you're as excited about this camera as I am. Uh, I really think it's going to be something special. Over the next week or so before release, I plan to uh, put, give this camera a thorough workout. Uh, and I'm going to try to produce a few more videos to look at some of these functions in a bit more detail. So like I said at the start, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because there is more content coming your way on the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.